or it's just more of like them giving the other players a good run out at the final game here. But uh, looking at their bans, they are still taking this very seriously by banning out the chip especially that has a 100% ban rate so far and also banning out the Zuz that's really really popular. Although the win rate is arguable. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, so far in Stream B, the Zask has been doing pretty good, actually. Like an overall 57%. For certain teams, it's ramped up to 100%. I think Whoa. CU soon also holds a really good win percentage on the Zask. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a no-brainer that the Zask has been eliminated here in the first phase of the bans. But the Vexana, now that's something that we don't see quite often. Exactly. I mean, one thing that we Vixana, always want to see is Assassin's. And speaking of which, the Fanny is going to be thrown right in while Ling and Hayabusa actually is still currently available to be picked or banned. So it is actually on the on the ball is actually on the court of CU soon to have them ban an either or situation. Moskov, Roger, Ling, Hayabusa, they're all up for grabs. And if Smart Omega wants to make things a little bit more fun, since Ukir did actually pilot onto the juice in for quite some bit. Are they actually going to be trying to, look, to pick up the juice in? Hmm. I'm looking at another possible as well. Julian has been pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah, and Smart Ogrinika has used Julian four times so far in this tournament. And it with a 50% win, it's pretty decent here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's definitely something that they can work with. Uh, for certain teams, Edith is also a big priority. Oh, yes. So we'll see what oh, is going to be prioritized here. Go. But Smart Omega, once life. again, right? They really love their Zusin. But and they understand that with the Zas being banned out already, it is going to be a very difficult lane in the mid lane for no, any of the mages when they get picked no. up. But Luo Yi and Rumi is actually the choice Ruby. for see you soon. Now, when the Zusin was actually picked by the start of Smart Omega, it does seem like the stats, of course, have been updated. A lot of times has been banned, 13 times being picked. I think ban was 25 around there. However, the most important stat that I want to look out for is win rate. We started the day with an abysmal 38% win rate onto the Ju Sin, but by now, at this point in time, we are looking at a 50, 50%, more than 50% win rate. So that is definitely something that I would like to look out for. While Smart Omega now have picked up, wow, an Edith and Link, this is actually a really scary lineup from the side of Smart Omega. Yeah, it's not the first time that we see uh, Ling, right? They have used Ling before this, but then again, unfortunately, they did not win with that game. But Edith instead, they normally play on the EXP lane. So they might leave the uh, the pick open here for one of the other roamers, uh, such as a Minotaur or even a Grok could be up for grabs. For sure, for sure. Grok, Minotaur, one of the heroes that... Of course, Chaknu has been utilizing in this current meta. Definitely now, a Kufra is a big possibility for them to pick up against the Lancelot. We saw that even Kyle Teasy himself on the Lancelot had a bit of a struggle when they were going up against the Kufra. So with Chaknu coming in, I hope that we do get to see it if it's not banned out here right now. But remember, with this export being banned out, this also might oh. show us that this Ruby is going into the room and they may want to pick up something like the Terizla to set up properly for these team fights. Are we looking at any form of setup though? Are we uh, from the side of Smart Omega? Because whenever we are looking at Jusin, remember we are always talking about Jusin, you need to pair up with a uh, with an E, uh, sorry, Roma that can clear waves fast enough, and heroes that can actually be able to play very well in a uh, in a area. And most of the time, it has been Harif. So Smart Omega actually taking away the Harif away from technically themselves. Mm. So what do you guys think about that, Ben? Yeah, I thought they would take the Harrier uh, because it's up against the Ruby, but they still have the Roger though. So maybe they're like trying to play like um, mind games here, but I do see the Roger here probably going to be picked up against Smart Omega because you want to at least put a fighter like hero against another fighter like hero. So with the Cho the taken out as well, that is going to be ensuring that CU soon would not be able to make full use of any of that uh, pick up potential. Although I wouldn't say that Cho would be a, a, an amazing pick from the side of CU soon because because we're looking at a mage on the side of Boy, not something that you would really want to play pick off on. It's more of the fact that you should want to play on to team fight potential in this case. As huh. such, Smart Omega, they are actually reacting with more team fight scenario. They're starting to realize that as well. So with the Lolita, that pretty much means that the Edith is gonna go over to the EXP lane, which is actually a problem for me. 
It, uh, Lolita is actually not all that great when it comes down to clearing out the waves in the middle lane. So this Lolita must pick up the Concussive Blast, but it will still take a lot of time for them to clear out the waves in the middle lane. That means some of these mana from the side of Juicin have to be focused onto creeps instead of heroes. Which is why I thought the options were either the Grok if they wanted to commit onto the wave clear and get that mid lane priority, or the Kufra, right? If they really wanted to stop the Lancelot. I they go for neither. They go for the Lolita, which is actually quite interesting. Uh, the Roger finally does get picked up here, and it's a it's a good well, a lane against this Moskov. It's a skill match matchup between both of these two, but I just don't really see how this Lolita comes to play with their composition. Obviously, a, a person like Chaknu, the veteran that he is, will be able to prove me wrong. But let's take a look at the final hero coming up from See You Soon. It's either going to be an EXP laner or a, uh, uh, a roamer here, depending on where this ruby is going to go. I do would love to have a little bit more of a setup hero, as well as a little bit more of sustainability in their ranks for themselves. A little bit of a theory that I believe might happen is that, yes, we, uh, we are definitely still going to be expecting oh the, uh, the, the, what was this again? Lolita to go middle lane, instead of shoving their wave, they're making Loi not hit the waves at all because of the bulwark that uh, the leader can essentially push right out. But most importantly, Guinevere. Probably the first Guinevere that we see here in Stream B. What do you guys think about this? This is boxy, right? On the Guinevere? Yeah, boxy. for the record, they have used Guinevere on day number one. Oh. So, yeah, it's, it, uh, it's not an alien pick for them. And also to point out the uh, Lolita pick, right? So because we have seen Edith before in the XP lane used by Smart Omega, so mm -hmm. the Lolita going to Rome. So, hmm. I, I really want to see and understand if whether the Bulwark really is going to do anything to help them either number one, push away fast yeah. enough if the lawyer have decided to throw all of these orbs, or is it just going to discourage this uh, this lawyer to not push out the waves? But ultimately, Juicin still need to hit the waves, which is something that I'm not exactly particularly happy about, not something that I thought would be the best of ideas. But you know what? I'm going to leave it over to Smart Omega to really answer the question. How exactly is this lineup going to work out at least in the middle lane? Because when it comes down to the goal, Lane, we have a pretty good answer. Is there any more? But, ladies and gentlemen, it does oh. look like we are going back hey. into the game. All right. As we welcome the first game of this best of three series between Smart Omega and See You Soon. The Kamai is here coming through without pressure. But the same can be said for Smart Omega from the Philippines. Well, well, well. It's a battle of who will actually get the win out of this and get a little bit of those uh, bragging rights. So far, when they talk about some of the stats, like uh, who gets more kills, right? It's it seemed to favor towards Smart Omega, but the general stats favor towards See You Soon, so it feels like a 50 50 game. Mm -hmm. And right now, this is actually quite surprising, right? We haven't really seen a lot of war cries today, but we do see it in the hands of Endoryu. And so far, Endoryu has been that aggressive, uh, I would say, jungler. He really likes to utilize his early game aggression to put some pressure over on the map, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So expect a lot of Endoryus from popping off in these side lanes, maybe giving the Roger a little bit of a good time. The exact thing that we were speaking about earlier with him being in a difficult matchup. Oh, but uh, speaking about difficult, it's probably going to be difficult for Run here as he needs to run for his life. And uh, so far, okay for him. Managed to evade the Tempest of Blades. Mm -hmm. He gets out, luckily for him. As both of these teams are going to be centering around the neutral objective very, very soon. 20 seconds are on the clock. It looks like Boxy is going to be the first one up to give out some vision for his team. And on the bottom side, oh, okay. And Dario is actually picking up all that gold. So it does give him a little bit of an advantage when it comes down to it. Not necessarily an EXP lead just yet over Tuzu. So it's still a 50-50 when it comes down to that turtle take. Oh, look at the movement there by Boxy. Going inside, just scouting out, gathering information in case he sees Andoyu trying to get that orange buff. But Andoyu's not there. It's okay. Focusing on the purple buff because he definitely needs that as a link. In fact, you kind of think about it, both sides truly need their own purple buff. So if you want to try to cancel each other, you we might see a jungle invasion later. But technically, nobody has actually been as aggressive as I would think that they were going to, right? It looks like Okir is going to be able to zone out the members of Siu soon quite a bit. But Ray, Ra, on the Luo Yi, not going to be able to dish out that damage, that early game damage that 
that you that the Luoyi is usually notorious for. And again, it pays dividends to the fact that the Jushin has a lot of range to work with. We're actually seeing that Boxy is caught a little bit low from that DPS damage coming in from Oki, but here we go. Oh, okay, Ando you on to Ra, but one flicker away, he should be fine. Plus, run is there any way to protect it? That's a big resource wasted, spent actually, before they go in for the neutral objective. And it does buy Smart Omega a little bit of time for them to push the tempo a little bit. Here we go, Ryota. Oh, on to Felix, it's gonna be 3v1 Felix, flickers away, but not too far though. Unfortunately, he's still close enough for Smart Omega to catch up onto him. But the fight's not over yet, Boxy is around the corner. Keep an eye on to Ra as well in case it does something funny, but nah, it's done. And though you get it. Yeah, see you soon doesn't want to go for the contest. We saw that Tuzi was nowhere near that, but look at this. Okay, might want to press the issue. Oh, Tempest of Blades and Boxy last hit. And do you want to go for it? Do you want to go for it? Nah. All right, and he gets away. So that is already Smart Omega Empress holding over control. Did I say Empress? Sorry. <laughs> I was so used to casting MWI. Smart Omega is actually pressing the issue. Run, though. Oh, run better. Run. Oh, Dumino Blast. Nice flicker to the front. But Joe, can he finish up the job? Not enough damage. But Joe, by his punish. But the fact that Tuzu came just in time to save run. All right, that's a trade in favor of Seiyu soon here. Despite Smart Omega holding control over the turtle, that Kamai aggression really coming through for Seiyu soon, as they are going to be able to, you know, hold off the aggression from Smart Omega. Initially, it was almost a 2k gold lead, but now Smart Omega, they're holding on with only 1k. As yeah, so we take a look at instant oh, replay man. with what happened earlier on. I mean, look at this. Numino Blast was perfect. I'm just looking at Jom right now. Mm, just not enough damage. That is the only answer. Oh, what? Boxy gets taken off and it looks like they're looking for more. Oh, look at this raw. 1v3, but the of this might save him. And Doyo still gets a double kill. Okay, okay. So it looks like it did not save him, but it looks like he will pay the price for it. 2-0 mm -hmm, trade so far. It looks like Omega once again looking for another trade in the bottom side of the map. See, we were w so worried about Jome on the Roger, but Smart Omega, they have been able to capitalize over the fact that they have been able to mobilize a lot faster, right? Giving uh, Jome a better time in the gold lane, allowing him to get to that power spike a lot quicker. So far, he does put that Thunderbelt first, so he goes in for a little bit more defense. But wait a second! Oh, just by the edge of that turret. So I see you soon. We'll get that kill easily out of Rota. Yeah, Ryota goes down here. But it looks like Andoryu is going to be able to dish out the damage onto Sorry, I'm Felix. Not going to be enough to take him down just yet. But what's happening in the mid lane here? Oh, looks like Yuki might be the first target. No, they target onto Jom. Good targeting there. Run will get the kill onto Jom. That's a little bit of a revenge for whatever happened at the bottom lane. But look who has arrived. It's going to be the Tempest of Place from Andoryu to dish out the damage. But they're still pretty low. Not enough health to withstand the damage coming out of see you soon. 3-0 trade in the fifth minute of the game. And oh, wait a second, that's a diversion play! Oh, okay, underneath the turret. And now, okay, hoping for the turret to someone help him. Nope, he will not. Instead, it's going to be real die helping and coming from the side, but they're looking for the next target. Ra, where are you going to go right now? It's going to be Jom that eats him up. But hang that thought for a second. Duzu comes in as well. Um, do you really want to continue this fight? Okay, I'm not too sure about that, but still, he's taking that risk and he will pay for it. Oh, that's a little over-aggressive right now from CU soon. I think they bit more than they could chew and they are going to be able to not get the neutral objective. Actually, Smart Omega going to start it off first. They do have um, a jungler at the moment with Tuzu being picked off on the board. So that's going to be an uncontested objective for Smart Omega. What What did you think CU soon was planning? I, I felt like that was too over-aggressive. Yeah, it felt like they were just contesting for that jungle minion. Yeah. That meant <laughs> nothing much, honestly. So I'm not too sure about that move. I have a lot of questions there. But we're not questioning this move right now because looks like they were going with the Requiem. Trying to catch Ryota, though. But is Ryota to my target? No, not really. Boxy, who we don't fall to hands of Jome instead. And now Smart Omega might take the advantage. Oh, nice. Numino Blast to catch two of them at least. And Jome is still around there to get the double kill for himself. But he goes straight onto the backline despite still having the turret that's below there. And look at this. Smart Omega with the rotation from the side. Andoyu shows up and cleans up the rest of you soon. 
Yeah, Smart Omega. They are picking up the tempo and they are looking for everything that they can find on the map. That turret is going to fall in that mid side as well as the bottom side. Looks like Tuzu is trying to put some pressure over onto Smart Omega. Not sure if that's the best decision right now, but he does get a trade over. Boxy, Wait a second. Uh, oh no. I it mean, disappeared. <laughs> he forgot the uh, power of the Zusin there. Yeah. That's all I can say. A little bit of an underestimation. But for Jom, right now he's being hunted down by the members of CU Soup. But oh, look who has been pulled back. Joke slam, like what you said. Felix will be the next one to fall for sure. And now Tuzu might be the following one. He's pretty low at the backline, but he tries to get Jom instead. Jom, nice kiting there by Jom. Wow. Oh, he double kill now in for Ukir, however. But Smart Omega, they're the ones that are holding that 5k gold lead. And it looks like it's counting. Right now, if we take a look at Jom, he does have a Thunder Belt being built in along with a Wind Talker. So he is respecting the damage output coming through, is trying to look for a little bit more of a defense coming in and a lot more scaling into the later stage of the game. Meanwhile, we see Run on the Moskov picking up two items. So he's not necessarily at his Holy Trinity just yet. He is lacking that DHS, but wait a second. Boxy again goes in. Oh, Boxy engages first and now Boxy might pay the price for it. But look at Run. Run is putting out the free hit damage from the back, but Boxy will go down the moment Joe shows himself and we might see another sacrifice in the name of Ra, so that the other two players can get away. Yeah, they're nowhere near being ready, but it looks like see you soon. They still want to commit. Tuzu does have the right gameplay in mind, is looking for a counter play in that top side of the map, trying to get in that tower for them to play that macro style. But if you take a look at the items, right, we saw that the Moskov was unable to dish out the damage just yet because he hasn't really completed his Holy Trinity yet. He only has a Corrosion Scythe and the Golden Staff, the DH has has not been built yet. So he does need a little bit more time to ramp up that damage for him to be able to come online. Meanwhile, the endless battle already built in by Joam. So it does make sense, but it looks like, uh-oh, oh, Andoryu. You. Okay, he goes in straight onto Duzu. And now it's going to be a 1v1. Tempest of Blades will be used by Duzu. Nice move there. To avoid the Tempest of Blades. And it uh, looks like both sides will call it truce. Why didn't... Continue that 1v1! We want to see it! Yeah. Guys! Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess they learned something out of see you soon early on is that don't overextend, so I'll let that go for now. Okay, okay. Maybe that was a little bit more for me than for the team, but I <laughs> I would have loved to see that 1v1. We've been seeing a lot of that as well, but once again here, Omega with the uh, Lord push gonna be marching down. Wait a second! Whoa! Nice catch there with the record up by Boxy! By Boxy! Help, not that big. He might be the first one to fall, and I know you will be ready for that. Luminum Blast will not connect onto anyone, but it will not be a problem for Spider Omega because right now they are oh. in the driver's seat, but they get the two members of CU soon, and also the turret at the bottom with the Lord still active, but the Lord will fall next. Nevertheless, Spider Omega. This is a nice push by them. Oh man, do you see how aggressive Andoryu was placing? Wait a second, run! Oh, 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 run! You better run right now! You better run because Joe is still there, but Felix as well as Ra is there. Instead, Felix will be run to fall in the name of Run. Oh man, was that worth it for See You Soon? Was that worth it to get the orange buff that they didn't even end up getting, I believe? Did they, did they get the uh, orange buff earlier? I mean, frankly speaking, it wasn't. Probably it would be better oh, if they, they focus on the farming instead. Yeah, but oh, looks like the fight's not stopping just yet. This is a brawl here now, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for entertainment? Because the next one to fall is going to be boxing in thanks to Joel again. Ruta gets 1.7 as well. Andoyo to do so. It's only Felix left. What can he do about this? Okay, no minutes. So a little bit of time up, but... There will not be enough time for sure. It's a 10k goalie, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like he is not going to be enough to defend that mm. base. Delay the inevitable, as it is going to be Smart Omega picking up game numero uno in this best of three. I gotta have to say, this is an outcome that I technically didn't really quite expect. I do. I was definitely saying that CU Soon's lineup 